Okay, so we will be working today on section 2.6. It's about second derivative and concavity. So in this section, what we do is we first learn how to determine a function is increasing or decreasing. And then we'll discuss uh, another very important concept regarding the shape of the graph of a function. For example, if the graph curves, does it curve upward or downward? Okay, this is what we call concavity. So you see that sometimes the graph is like this. From here to there, the graph is concave down. Concave down. And this side is concave up, right? So this side is concave up, concave down. So that is, um, that is the, another concept that we'll be talking about. But before that, uh, let's begin with increasing and decreasing function, okay? So here is the definition. Increasing, a function is increasing when its graph rises as, as, it, as it goes from left to right. That is a function f is increasing over the interval, over an interval i, if for every a and b in i, if a is less than b, so b is on the right side, a is less than b, then f of a should be less than f of b. So for example, as you can see here, a is here and b is here. So clearly a is less than b. So b is on the right hand side from a. Then the f of a and f of b, f of b must be bigger. Then we call it increasing because the graph is going up now, okay? It just, uh, it like, it's like, you know, you are driving uphill. In the same way, decreasing means a function is decreasing when its graph falls as it goes from left to right. That is a function f is decreasing over interval i if for every a and b in i, if a is less than b, then f of a is greater than f of b, okay? f of a is greater than f of b. Then we call it decreasing. As you see, the graph is decreasing. We always look this graph from left to right, okay? One time in the class, one of, when I say, okay, I have this graph here and, uh, and then I say that, okay, so the graph is increasing from negative infinitive, increasing from negative infinitive to, let's say this is A, this is B, it goes like that, A in negative infinitive to A, and then decreasing from A to B. As you see, the graph is going down from A to B and again increasing from B to infinity. Okay, so when I say that, in my last class, one of my students asked me that, well, I see that the graph is increasing, so this one is going up. How can you say it's decreasing? Well, if you look at from right to left, yes, it looks like increasing, but remember in mathematics, the convention is that we look at the graph from left to right, okay? So left to right, what is happening, going up or down? So keep that in mind. Now, here is one example. So for the, given, for the figure given below, find where the function is increasing and where it is decreasing. As you can see that the function is going down all the way from negative infinitive. So decreasing from negative infinitive. Okay, when we write the interval, remember we write the x value only. So from negative infinity to one, it is decreasing. And then it is increasing all the way from one to two. So increasing from one to two. And again, decreasing from two to four, as you can see, decreasing from two to four and again increasing from uh, four to infinity. Okay, we generally write the open interval. So that's it, when the graph is given, then you can figure out where the graph is increasing and decreasing. Now, the interesting thing is that 
is there any relationship between increasing and decreasing a uh, function and the derivative? So that is what we want to explore. Okay, all right guys, so is there any relationship between increasing and decreasing function and the derivative? Now remember, if in this figure, this is uphill going up, so it's increasing. So if I draw the tangent line, the tangent line is positive. Okay, so that tangent line, slope of the tangent line is positive. That means we know that the slope of tangent line is given by the derivative, so derivative is positive if it is increasing. Now, right on the top, the tangent line is horizontal. So the derivative is actually zero right on the top. And when it is decreasing, as you can see, the derivative is negative. And right on the bottom of the hill, right here, again, if you draw the tangent line, this, it's horizontal. So that means slope of the tangent line is horizontal meaning derivative is zero. In the same way, if it is increasing, the derivative is positive. So the relationship between increasing, decreasing and derivative is that if the derivative is positive, then the function is uh, increasing. So f is increasing. And when the derivative is negative, then f is decreasing. All right, and right on the top, like we call it extrema, we call it maximum and minimum value. We'll discuss that later. But for this moment, where the derivative is zero, we call this critical number. Okay, when the graph changes its direction, it was going all the way uphill, this, this one is going up, increasing, and from that point, it is start decreasing. And that point is called critical number. And also there is another critical number here. Let's say this is A, this is B, and this one is C. So A, B, C are called critical number because that's the point where the graph changes its direction. Okay, so that's the idea. Okay, now let's look at this definition, critical value or critical number. What does that mean? Critical value of a function f is any number c in the domain of f for which the tangent line at c, f of c is horizontal or for which the derivative does not exist. As you can see in this figure, at this point derivative is undefined because there is a sharp corner, right? When there is a sharp corner, we know that before from our previous uh, class that derivative does not exist or undefined. And the derivative here is zero. F prime of B is zero at, at B. The derivative at this point is zero. The derivative at this point is zero. So this A, B, C, D are called the critical values or critical point. Okay, so critical point means, mathematically speaking, critical point means it's a point where the derivative is zero or undefined. Okay, mathematically speaking, critical value means where the derivative is zero or undefined. And in a simple word, what that critical number means is the critical number is a point where the graph changes direction, okay, from increasing and then decreasing, all the way decreasing here, and again increasing, so this is the critical point. Okay, now if the graph is given, life is easy. You can just look at the graph and you can tell where the graph is increasing or decreasing from left to right. And where the graph changes its direction, they are called critical value. Not a big deal. But life is not that always easy, right? Sometimes what they do is they give us, instead of graph, they give us the um, you know, equation like this. Example one and two, as you can see here. When the equation is given, one way to do this is to draw the graph. And uh, drawing graph, if it is a simple function, 
Well, it's good. I mean, we know how to draw the graph of a simple function. But if they give us functions like, let's say, if I give you a function x plus 3 divided by x plus e to the power e square root x plus ln x, for example, drawing this graph, drawing the graph of this function, because we need to find the accurate point for critical value, right? Drawing this graph accurately is a pain. Nobody like to draw this kind of graph, I think. Okay, you don't enjoy drawing this. So we need to learn a method without drawing the graph, how we can find the critical value and where the function is increasing and decreasing. So that is what we're gonna do now, okay? Again, if you want to draw the graph accurately and figure out where the graph is increasing and decreasing, it's, per it's perfectly fine, but for ugly functions like I showed before, drawing graph accurately is, is a pain, okay? It's not fun. So we will learn that technique. So example one and two. Let's look at example one first. Okay, I will go this side. So in example one, what we need to do is for each function below, find the critical number and we need to find the open interval where the function is increasing and where the function is decreasing. So these are the things we need to find. So example one, uh, let me just copy the questions quickly. So the given function is given f of x equals x cubed plus three x square minus nine x plus four. All right. So here are the steps. We follow this three-step method. Step one, we find the critical number. Step two, we put the critical number on number line and divide the number line into section, into interval. And then we choose the testing point and test the point. So just by reading this may not make that much of a sense, but we will you know, I'll explain that step by step with this example. So step one, find the critical number. Okay, first of all, let me find the derivative here. That will be three X square plus six X minus nine. So step one, find the critical number. For critical number, Remember the definition of critical value is we have just seen it's either f prime of x equals zero or f prime of x is undefined. So these are the place where the graph changes its direction. So let us calculate the derivative here, I mean the, the, the function. So I'll, I want to give you a hint when we say f prime of x, this is a polynomial function. You know, there is nothing in the denominator. There is no uh, algebraic expression in the denominator. So in this case, it's pretty easy. So there is no such point because you cannot make this function undefined. If there is something, let's say x plus one divided by x minus two, then you can make this function undefined by supposing x equals two, but there is no such thing here. So there is no such point which makes the function undefined, okay? No such point. Now this side, you just take the top part, which is three X square, you just take the uh, derivative plus six X minus nine equals zero and solve this. And solving this, solving this equation, guys, can you tell me what is the value for this? I trust that everybody know how to solve it. And if you solve it, one and negative three. Okay, good, one and negative three. Excellent. Step one is done. Any question? Now, step two. So in step two, you draw a number line. 
okay so what you do is draw a number line that partition or divide that is you know that is divided by and I will say you know draw a number line and plug in and put the critical number there critical number dividing it into dividing it into intervals okay so what what I mean is you have a number line here and then you have one point which is negative three just put it there and one there somewhere there in the neg uh, in that number line so this is going to negative infinitive and this side is going to uh, go to positive infinity so you have the interval okay you have three intervals here negative infinity to negative three negative three to one and one to infinity so from each interval you choose one point testing point choose testing point x equals one point from each interval now tell me any number between negative infinity and negative three maybe negative four for simplicity i'll take negative four but you are free to choose any number if you want to choose negative you know three thousand four hundred twenty five point seven five that's fine but my uh, concern is that try to make life easy by choosing you know nice number okay that will make life easy to calculate and what is the easy number between negative three and one zero i think but you can choose any number you can choose negative two you can choose negative one you can choose 0 0.35724 whatever but zero makes life easy i choose that and one number from this in interval one to infinity which is uh, let's say two step two is done step three now plug in the testing point test the derivative function using testing point okay so let me just copy the function here uh, derivative function is f prime of x is 3x square plus 6x minus 9 now when testing point when x equals negative 4 for x equals negative 4 your derivative is going to be 3 times negative 4 square plus 6 times negative 4 minus 9 uh, how much is that, by the way? Okay, Q, thank you so much. Yeah, so this will be definitely positive, right? So you, we don't care what the val what the number is, but we just care whether it's positive or negative. So this is positive clearly. So for x equals zero, your derivative will be three zero squared plus six times zero minus nine, which is definitely negative. And for x equals two, your f prime of two is going to be three two squared plus six times two minus nine, which is again positive. So if remember what how we define increasing and def, uh, decreasing function is that if the derivative is positive that means increasing if the derivative is negative at that point that means it's decreasing okay and in this also increasing now in general we write the answer in this form okay the function is 
so f of x is increasing on the interval so this negative 4 inch you know the negative 4 is here remember i think i will make this this positive this negative and this positive that's what we got derivative right so f of x is increasing on negative infinity to negative 3 and and 1 to infinity so f of x is decreasing decreasing on the interval negative 3 to 1 that's how we do it any question guys okay so let's try one more and then we uh, start our um, practice test okay example two So example two is, uh, let me just copy the question first. Example two, the function given f of x equals x plus three over x minus four. And you can find the derivative by using the quotient rule. And I trust that all of you know how to find the derivative. And if you simplify the derivative, you're gonna get negative seven over x minus four squared, okay? by using using chain rule sorry quotient rule using quotient rule you're gonna get this now i want you to find step one find the critical number Guys, I leave it to you. It's the exact same process, step by step. So for critical number, we know that f prime of x equals zero or f prime of x is undefined. This derivative will be undefined only if the bottom part is zero. So that means x minus four is square equal to zero, then this derivative functions will be undefined. But this function can never be zero because on the top there is seven. So seven, negative seven, negative seven can never be zero. So there is no such point. Okay, you cannot make the derivative function zero, no matter how hard you try. But you can make this derivative function undefined by putting the denominator equal to zero. So from this one, you're gonna get x equals four. Now, what is the critical number? Remember the definition, critical number is a point in the domain of f of x. In the domain of f of x, so that is the definition. But x four should be a critical number, but this is not in the domain, okay? Not in the domain not in the domain of f of x okay so there is no critical number Yes, Q, so you're right. Um, there is no critical number for this function. Now, however, sometimes even if x equals four is not a critical number, this is an asymptote. As you know that x equals four is an asymptote, right? Sometimes the asymptote will, uh, you know, uh, the graph may increase or decrease on the side of the asymptote. So we need to test, even though this is not in the domain, we need to test it. So step two, let us test this point. Okay, so the number line is and there is four here, negative infinitive and infinity. So you can choose testing point. Testing points are x equals 
maybe you want to choose five there and maybe this side zero to make life easy again you can choose any number between negative infinity and four I'll, I'll do zero and five so zero and five okay you can choose any number between negative infinity and four and to make life easy we choose that as zero and then five on the right hand side so and that's that's the second step now step three and in step three we just copy we test it so copy the derivative which is negative seven over x minus four squared and plug in that so for x equals zero your negative f of x f prime of x equals negative seven over zero minus four squared which is negative and for x equals uh, five f prime of sorry f prime of zero there so now f prime of five equals negative seven over five minus four squared again this is negative by the way you see the bottom part is always positive because of the square and there is negative so this function is always negative by the way okay so that means it is decreasing and this is also decreasing um, and so the thing is sometimes you know what what i see that a student write the function is decreasing everywhere but uh, i think that a statement is has a little flaw it's not everywhere decreasing when x equals four then the function is undefined so when you say the function is decreasing everywhere from negative infinity to infinity so you are including that four as well you cannot do that because at four x equals four the function is undefined therefore the best way to write this down is that the function is or f of x is decreasing on the interval negative infinity to four and then four to infinity and increasing nowhere Okay, so this is it. Any question guys so far?